Well, welcome back to City Line. With me, I have two individuals who are here to talk about the Dickman Mill Park expansion. So please join me in welcoming Christy Evans. You are the Capital Projects Manager for Metro Parks Tacoma. Christy, I haven't seen you in years. It's so good to see you. Welcome to City Line. Yeah, it's nice to be back again. And you brought with you Mr. Mark Gans. You are the CEO of Cambia Health Solutions. Welcome to City Line, Mark. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, Christy, let's uh, let's get into it because we have 13 minutes and we could do a whole hour on this subject. Tell me more about the Dickman Mill Park expansion and the involvement of Cambia Health Solutions. You bet. I mean, cr construction started at the beginning of December. We dove right in as we prepare for the major update uh, that will honor Tacoma's heritage as the lumber capital of the world. And to do that, it was a great thanks to our $2.9 million gift from Cambia Health Solutions. It was a decade long community vision that will become reality in 2021 as the park is updated uh, with a new plaza, which will be housing the historic head saw from Dickman Mill. And Cambia has also had involvement with Metro Parks uh, that included another addition to our waterfront Cambia made a great grant help build the space now known as the Cambia Legacy Lawn at Dune Peninsula and uh, the beautiful waterfront park that opened just last year. Both these are great improvements to, with our park assets. So Mark, wow, uh, I don't know how we can say thank you enough for uh, the generosity that you've shown our city. Why did Cambia decide to get involved in the Dickman Mill Park expansion? Well, as you may know, uh, we were founded uh, in 1917 uh, as a company. It was founded as uh, Pierce County Medical Industrial Bureau, which was um, actually the very first health insurance entity uh, in the world. And it was created by timber workers who were decided they wanted to try to take care of one another by pooling their a portion of their weekly wages to be able to be there for each other in a time of, of need. As you know, uh, working in the timber industry was a dangerous industry and people would get injured or be exposed to the elements and get sick and they wanted to take care of one another. And so I love the beginnings of our, of our company because it was about people uh, in relationship to each other and helping one another. And so we wanted to, when we were celebrating our 100th anniversary in 2017, we wanted to give back to Tacoma. We wanted to recognize our roots. We wanted to recognize and honor the timber workers that actually helped create this company that has uh, become a very um, large and stable company that serves people across this country. And so to be able to come back home, if you will, to Tacoma and be able to launch this, this project. And I guess the Dickman Mill idea just really spoke to me and it spoke to us because it was about honoring uh, the great industry that one might say built the city of Tacoma. And, and, and I think that it's important that we always remember our history wherever we are. And I want Tacomans young, especially young and generations to come to never forget the shoulders on which they stand. And this oh. is a way for them to do it. I love that. I mean, that truly is, is a sentiment that is grounded deeply in Tacoma. So Christy, based upon what Mark just said, obviously this project is simply more than expanding, enhancing the Dickman Mill Park. It's about creating a space uh, that shares some of Tacoma's heritage in, in some really dynamic ways. Can you tell us about some of the key design elements include and their significance in sharing Tacoma's heritage with those park visitors. You bet. I mean, preserving an icon, an artifact that was listed on the local and state historic registers, which is the head saw and the log carriage, is, is huge. I mean, that is the focal. But then also with that, we have got a piece of art. Uh, we have an art local artist. Uh, we're calling this the ghost log, and it's bringing you know, art to the site that is symbolizing both the lumber industry as well as indigenous significance of the land and how the community shares and enjoys both. 
And then there's a pedestrian pier, which will bring Tacomians to the connection to their waterfront, which is you know significant part of the Puget Sound and to our people, along with some interpretive signage, which will help communicate Tacoma's heritage. Mm. So Mark, you did a beautiful job in uh, encapsulating uh, Tacoma's legacy in the past. How would you describe Cambia's legacy in Tacoma today? It's the people. We have over 500 employees in the Tacoma Pierce County um, area, both in our uh, primary building there in downtown at 15th and Market, as well as um, we have a lot of employees who work from home. Um, and that, and that, they did that before the pandemic when now all of our employees are working from home. Um, but they, it's, I think legacy is always about people. It's about, you know, how one uh, grows people into being the very best people they can be. And today, I think we continue to serve uh, people in Washington state, but again, as I said, around the country, and it's, we've never lost that notion that this is a, our business is people serving people. And, and so I, I, I hope that that's the legacy. I, I think that providing this gift to the city of Tacoma and to the generations to come um, is, a, is a symbolic uh, 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 of that, but it, it isn't what the real legacy is, which is people serving each other and trying to make a better community. And in this case, a healthier community. You know, it, sitting here listening to you does not, it doesn't surprise me that you have partnered with Metro Parks. <clears throat> for as long as I've known Metro Parks for decades, um, their mission has always been written across my heart, which is creating healthy opportunities to learn, play, and grow. And if that doesn't line up with what you just said, Mark, I don't know what does. I mean, it's like, it's like a perfect marriage, the two of you. It was that. It was one of those amazing moments when, you know, we were kind of thinking, what would make sense? What would be the right thing? And who would have who would have known that there was this incredible artifact from the timber industry, you know, the largest saw in the world that was, you know, built in Washington State specifically to handle the old growth uh, trees that were coming into the mills and to actually that it was sitting in pieces and looking for some love and a chance to be there and to find out that the parks uh, department wanted to do this and wanted, it was just a perfect, it was a perfect um, thing. You know, it just came together. It was meant to be, it really yes, was. It, was. it absolutely was. Christy, when you, when you hear that, can you talk a little bit about the history of the early visions for the park? And uh, also how long ago Metro Parks first envisioned this expansion? Because, you know, Metro Parks has 20, 30 year uh, visions on the books. Yeah, of course. Um, and exactly from what Mark was saying, I mean, think about it. Mr. Dickman purchased that mill in 1922 and it stayed in his family until it closed in 1977. I mean, so it's, yeah, the family had it for a very long time. Um, and it was, it, it was once the busiest lumber mills um, and last one operating on the waterfront. Um, most head saws uh, were dismantled and gone to scrap, but not this one because our community saw something in that and the community went and got the head saw and worked hard to get it listed as an historic ad artifact um, and listed on the registry. Um, the land was purchased by Metro Parks in about 1992 uh, recognizing the potential to beautify the shoreline. Um, it had been burned, so it wasn't, you know, it was a little nasty looking, um, but to create a public space out of that. And from there, in 2001, we had our phase one of the, of the project, and it, and it took the first step in transforming this mill site into restoring wetlands along the shore and, and became that master vision to restore a rare artifact. Um, this massive 55 thousand ton head saw, you know, and log carriage, it had been part of the mill. And that is how, you know, a way of creatively sharing the history in waterfront, you know, with the community. Uh, we were able again in 2003 to do a phase two, which we brought um, a walkway out to the remaining remnants 
um, with the ultimate vision of bringing back the head saw. Unfortunately, it didn't happen at that time. Um, we had been storing the head saw um, at Marine Park, so people were able to see it. It was on the waterfront for several, you know, many years. And then in 2003, when we did do this, we had it moved to Point Defiance to hold it for, you know, something like this <laughs> that, that happened that, you know, sparks an interest out of somebody and we were able to move forward. So that's kind of gives you the, the history and, and it is about people for sure. You know, when we talk about parks, Metro Parks has a vast portfolio, Christy, of over 70 parks. So in your opinion, what do you think the likelihood would have been of this project moving forward without the generous 2.9 million investment that can be made? Right, I mean, Metro Parks has always had a desire to find the perfect partner and we found each other, it was, it was amazing. But as much as we want to see this project or others, you know, we wanted to see for so many years to have it go, we didn't know it would happen this soon. And there's simply, you know, never enough tax dollars to make every great vision that any park system has come true. And so that's why it's just really important to have, you know, philanthropic investments um, it's important to all park systems. And we are so fortunate that Cambia shared our vision and their vision and had a desire to give back to the community to make this happen. It, it's awesome. When I go out there, you know, even though there's problems out there sometimes during construction, it just to see that it's going well and, and it's happening is just, it's exciting. Absolutely. So speaking of good things, Mark, uh, we understand that you are retiring uh, very, very soon after nearly two decades leading your company. So based on that, and I, I have to tell you, I'm sad to hear that. How do you feel about the Dickman Mill Park construction start, starting so close to your retirement? Well, they actually started construction on my 60th birthday of all things. When I when I learned that you guys started, I was like, wow, that's kind of, I know it wasn't intended, but it was yet it another was. <laughs> signals that, uh, that it was meant to be. For me personally, I mean, it's been the greatest honor of my life and, and sometimes the biggest challenge of my life, certainly to lead a, a large uh, organization. And um, because I always feel you best honor the people that came before us in this business. Um, the best way I can honor them and the best way our current uh, nearly 5,000 employees could honor them was not by nesting in the things they did in their day, but to do innovative and creative things in our day and to make uh, sure that we're serving the people in this community the best we can. And, Healthcare for so many is very fragmented. It's sort of like the pieces of the saw, you know, sitting in, in a yard. And um, what we're trying to build as a company is an integrated healthcare experience so that people have their best way of living from the point of birth until the graceful completion of their lives. And that we can be there in all of those places um, to make straight their path. That's really, you know, we've really expanded the, the offerings of the company beyond the health insurance offerings that, that our forebears started with or that even I inherited two decades ago. And it's really about being there with solutions at all places. So when I think about this saw that was in pieces coming together and being one integrated whole again, it's, it's sort of a symbol, symbol of how far our company has come and what we're trying to create for people in the way they experience healthcare. I know that sounds a little bit uh, in, you know, interesting, but that is part of what inspired me. And I thought, you know, this will be a, it'll be a private symbolism for me. Um, that's not what the public will see. And I don't want them, I don't want it to be about Cambia. I want it to be about Tacoma and about the heritage of Tacoma, but privately um, it's really neat to see something that was in pieces and too fragmented, if you will, to be, to be visible. Um, to now be as it is meant to be, Absolutely. one single whole. And, and what a beautiful legacy to leave behind uh, from a company that's known for uh, taking people when they're in parts and when they're broken 
and helping them heal. And that's exactly what you have done with the gift that you've given. Christy, with all of the features of this park, we're talking the massive head saw, the pedestrian pier, and the gorgeous public art piece. Um, as you said, that's a lot to consider, a lot of coordination. Um, when can we look forward to experiencing all of those updates to the uh, Dickman Mill Park? Well, you're right. I mean, a lot of, of coordination and many pieces to this. and. You know, a great design team that listens and owns the site, um, takes care of it. A contractor that takes great care in making this work. I mean, moving the thousands of tons of, of head saw across the straight, the, uh, excuse me, across the state. And then the pass closes <laughs> and it has to sit there. And, you know, and it did, it made it to Spokane. It's in their hands. They're going to do a great job at, at fixing it up, but you know, there will always be challenges ahead as this project moves forward, as all construction does. But you know what? Come summer of 2021, we will have a great gem to see. Thank you, Christy and Mark. We hope that you're able to join us when it opens. I know that many Tacomans would like to thank you for your generosity in making this happen for our community. Thank you. Same to you. You too, Amanda. Thank you. Well, that wraps up our first city line of the new year. We've given you some great virtual things to think about in this last hour. So above all, as I say, please continue to socially distant, wear your mask, wear your gloves, keep your gatherings very, very small, and above all, reach out to those that you know and love. And when you come back, as always, I'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Happy New Year. Bye.